Hello, I'm Carl Hawkinson, University of Minnesota Extension, Hennepin County, Ag and Natural Resource Educator. And uh, in the midst of this COVID-19 pandemic, uh, kind of crazy world we live in now for not too long, we all hope. Uh, I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about my composting uh, situation here and hopefully uh, uh, you can pick up a pointer or two that will help you in your garden. So here's my lovely backyard. I did say I'm the Hennepin County agent, but this happens to be Ramsey County, that's where I live. Uh, you can see my lovely garden here. It's about 15 by 12 feet. And uh, here you can see a couple compost piles. This little pile here was put there last fall. And we're gonna sift that in a minute and I'll show you how that looks. This is a pile that got turned and completed uh, last turn last fall and that should be ready to go. I'll probably turn that once more. And this is what's currently uh, cooking. I have a bucket under the sink and uh, this is leaves, grass, and kitchen scraps. And if you can see right here, I just put a bucket of kitchen scraps in there this morning. And if you dig down and reach in, it's getting warm now. And these leaves I collected last fall uh, as my brown material and also to keep things covered never had any trouble with rodents or anything like that and and uh, this is just a simple three by three gate system with fences I like this a lot I've had these for I think 20 years now these pins just kind of stick it to the ground um, super simple if you want to dig in the pile you pull that out pull this little thing out here and get at it and so I dump one into the other. So it's nice to have at least two bins. Three is ideal. And here is a lovely machine that I got for free. A friend of mine found it on the street for free. It's an electric lawnmower, corded electric. So there's just zero maintenance, except for the lawnmower blade. You want to sharpen your lawnmower blade once in a while. Um, won't go into that right now, but. Um, you can figure out how to do that on the web or ask somebody that knows or bring it somewhere. So it's electric, no fumes. Um, I do have it set high. You should always mow your grass high. And it's a mulching mower. So the grass and leaves stay in there. And then it has a bag. Now normally, the stupidest thing you can do, in my humble opinion, is to take your grass and throw it in the garbage. Uh, but for collecting materials for compost is fantastic. Uh, in the fall, I grind up leaves. When I cut the grass, I save the grass. And when you mix layers of grass and leaves, it's perfect, especially when the leaves have been ground up a little bit. If you just have raw leaves, they can work, but they tend to kind of mat and uh, make an impervious layer. So I mix grass and leaves with kitchen scraps. I have a bucket under the sink, as I mentioned. I put several inches of water underneath there in the bucket and it pours right out. So that is cooking. I don't know uh, if you can come over here. This was one that uh, was mostly complete last fall. And you can see there's stuff in there. There's a, there's a banana peel label, things like that. And then what I do is take this and sift it. And why don't we go over there and take a quick look. Today, today, April 6th, April 5th, 2020. Uh, um, April we'll probably never forget. So here's compost that was completed last winter. You can see it looks nice, but it's got, got stuff in it. And so simply all that I do is take a wheelbarrow, which I also got for free. And this thing I've had for another 25 years, piece of wood clamped, screwed together with some uh, two layers of this I guess it's half inch chicken wire. And all I do is take a shovel, which was also free because it was left in the garage of this house I bought, and put it on top of here. Now there's much more fancy ways to do this. You can go on the web and see all kinds of wonderful ways to do this, but for my uh, backyard here and just my level, I'm not doing a lot. Oh, I just rake it across there. 
don't know if you can see, but there's a lot of little shoots sprouting already. But there's sticks and avocado pits, and once in a while there'll be rubber bands, and uh, here, like, there's a little label from probably a banana or something. Just shake it up a little bit. There, you can see the sticks that get left over. I'll just toss that over there. Let's do one more. Let me just see how fast it goes. Put a little on there. <clears throat> kind of rake it over. Tomato stalks, some piece of grass or something trying to grow. Often when it's warmer in the summer you get more, all kinds of worms and insects that haven't totally come to life yet. But there. Super cheap, had this for years. And there you have it. Some really, really nice compost. And that's, oh, here's a little little worm in there kind of coming to life this is what I'm gonna use this year to start my plants it smells great I don't think it tastes great so here you have it kitchen scraps leaves and grass you don't have to buy anything here's I'm gonna take this downstairs here's a uh, it's not a worm that's a uh, Oh, those little millipede. Anyway, when it gets warmer, you will see all kinds of... Uh, this is soil life. This is what brings your soil to life. And uh, I don't buy fertilizer. Um, and I use this on the grass. I use it in the shrubs because I end up with a lot of it because I import nutrients. I'm buying all those fruits and vegetables, banana peels, coffee grounds, all that stuff that ends up in the compost is nutrients I'm bringing onto this property. So, um, that's what I'm doing with compost. And one little thing I wanted to add, a bonus feature. Uh, this time of year, uh, it's a good time to take your tools. And uh, last year, I sharpened them and put a little oil on there. Um, and you get a file, learn how to do that, and you get that sharp. Here's a hoe I got at Mungtown. I figured the Mung knows something about hoeing plants. Actually, they know a lot about it. And these are great little hoes. This came sharp as a razor, and I haven't used it much, so I haven't had that one sharp. But keep it oiled, keep it sharp. I put linseed oil on these handles. It'll last for years and years. I'll never have to buy another hoe unless I break it or something like that. So, here's to a great season. We're gonna all work together and stick together on this. And, uh, I also coordinate the Twin Cities Metro Growers Network with the Sustainable Farming Association. I have a website, um, which I can't remember right now, but if you Google Twin Cities Metro Growers Network, it'll come up. Uh, thanks, thanks a lot, and we'll see you this summer.